Well, this is very exciting. This is a car that you've, uh, you've seen in all the magazines you've heard about. Uh, this is the first production model. This is the first customer car. This is the Tesla Roadster. You know, the all-electric, zero-emission Roadster. Uh, if it looks a little dirty, it's because I've uh, been driving it. It's got 500 miles on it, and uh, very exciting. You know, uh, there's been so much speculation uh, about this car and so many myths and all that kind of stuff, but here it is in the flesh, and we're going to take it out on the road, and you'll get to see it and uh, possibly hear it. If your hearing's real good, because you have to listen very carefully because it's electric. And the man behind the whole project is here, Elon Musk. Elon, come on in here. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Well, congratulations. Thank uh, you. I mean, I know this has been a long gestation period and, and, and ups and downs and, you know, people will never work and all the kind of stuff you go through. Sure. But this is the first customer car, right? Yes, this is production unit one. Wow. Wow. Very, very neat. Uh, take us through it. Now, I know we've, we've read about it in all the magazines, but it's always been from a writer's point of view. Yeah. Uh, you're the guy behind it. Tell us exactly what we have here. We started with an Elise chassis, mm -hmm. um, but this car is 30% heavier, about six inches longer than an Elise. So we, we actually had to modify the chassis extensively. Okay. And we also lowered the door sill. The wheelbase is about uh, three inches longer. Oh, okay. And how uh, much heavier is it than a standard Elise? Uh, it's about 30% uh, heavier. So 30 this is a 2,650 okay. pound car approximately. But, wow, that's, but, but at 2,600 pounds, you're still Six or seven hundred pounds lighter than a Corvette or something yes. equivalent to that. Yeah. Uh, you kind of bristle when people, oh, they've just modified a Lotus, but that isn't what you <laughs> did at all, is no, it? No. Uh, no. This really is a brand new car. That's part of the reason why you know, people say it's it loot to being a converted Lotus. Well, it's flat out untrue. Yeah. Um, there's not a single body panel in common with the Lotus. This is an old carbon fiber body. Um, it's, not, it's not even made by Lotus, it's made by Sorteria in France. Right. We did a count of, of unmodified Lotus parts, so only about 8% okay. of the, the parts in the car are actually uh, Lotus heritage. The powertrain, uh, basically the, uh, the battery, the motor, uh, power electronics and the transmission are all Tesla uh, design manufactured components. Right. And what, w what we do is we actually have a Lotus just to assembly of the glider, which is assembly of everything except the powertrain. Then they ship it to uh, California where Tesla uh, installs the powertrain. So Tesla is actually the, the end manufacturer right. of, the, of the car. And it, it's, it's considered a California made car uh, because the majority of the value is actually manufactured right. in California. Right. I have my 1909 Baker electric car next door. Well, I have the original Edison batteries, the alkalines, but I run it on deep cycle batteries. Uh, essentially golf cart batteries. Right. And those ones, you charge them fully all the way up and then you run them all the way down. And then you charge them all the way up again. This you always want to keep what between 40 and 80 percent charge, something like that. You know, this really doesn't uh, doesn't actually care about the state of charge. Oh, it you, you, okay. you could leave it at uh, five percent. You could leave it at 90 percent. It's capable of doing a full charge from zero to 100 percent in three and a half hours. You can actually plug it in anywhere. You just need an extension cord. In fact, it'll take okay. different amperages. And you use let me see if I'm correct. 6,831 batteries. Is that what it is? Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that seems almost amazing to me. Well, those 6,831 cells are all assembled into one pack um, and then inside the pack there are blades. The advantage of having so many small cells is that we can we can isolate each cell mm -hmm. so that even if something bad happens to that cell it catches on fire or anything it's isolated gotcha. and it's, it, there's not that much energy in each individual cell so we can protect gotcha. you know ensure that one cell doesn't cause a cascading effect in another cell. So it's not like so. Christmas lights if one goes out they all right. go out. No, no not at all. But you know the thing that's fascinating me about this car is you've eliminated all the negatives of an electric car. A lot of times when people would convert existing cars to electric, they'd be slower, it didn't have the range, right. less safe. So what do you got really? I mean, you've managed to make essentially a true sports car. You know, I'm instinctively looking for dual exhaust <laughs> and I, I'm not gonna find it. You got a splitter back there. And of course you have the four wheel disc brakes and, and everything else as well. With the electromagnetic braking, um, you really uh, don't have to put much wear and tear on the brakes. Okay. Um, in fact, this car should be a very, very low maintenance car because there are no tune-ups required, no oil changes. Right. Because of the fact that you use regenerative braking where you recapture the energy of motion, put it back right. into the pack, uh, you actually uh, won't even wear out the brakes. Now, I heard originally they were a one-speed, now you've got the two-speed transmission, correct? Well, the first initial cars, really, we're only talking about the first hundred cars or so, um, they will be provided with the two-speed transmission but fixed in second okay. gear. What we have in development is uh, an upgraded motor and, and power electronics, right. which will, with a single speed, exceed the specifications of okay. the two-speed car. Gotcha. Is there anything to see under the hood? As a car guy, I just want to look under there. Wow, look at that mill. <laughs> yeah, there's really nothing to look at here. <laughs>
This is like, this is the power electronics module. Right. Um, this is the bat this is the corner of the battery pack here. Okay. And what is this here? Standard water glycomic for the uh, liquid cooling of the battery pack. Oh, okay. We actually have the trunk set up such that you can have a set of golf clubs. You know, actually, I buy sports cars like this so I don't have to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look at this. Cool. And it has air conditioning as well. Oh yeah, yeah. The AC system is both for the passenger section as well as for the battery pack. I see. We're expecting somewhere in the order of 100,000 miles for the battery pack. Wow. I'm just waiting for Elon to show up. He's got something to surprise me. I don't know what it is, but this guy's always got something under his sleeve. We were going to be kind of unfair from a technology standpoint. For example, it's going to have uh, an option to have uh, rocket thrusters. Rocket thrusters? Yes, from SpaceX. All right. Yeah. How, uh, how does that work? See, I don't know when you're kidding and when you're not. Now. No, in this case, I'm serious. You're going to have rocket thrusters? Um, yes. And what will provide the thrust? There's no fuel in the car. No, we're going to use ultra high pressure compressed air. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's called gas thruster. Okay. All um, right. The main thruster will be like uh, behind the license plate. Right. So uh, for acceleration, it drops the license plate and just and, and that behind the license plate is a rocket thruster. That's like full on James Bond. Pickup truck buyers tend to be pretty conservative in what they like. It needs to look like a pickup truck, you know, all that kind of thing. And this doesn't look anything like a pickup truck, yeah. but it immediately makes pickup trucks look old fashioned. Well, I think there's a preconceived notion of what a pickup truck should be. And I think that's something that we said, if we're gonna go bold, we need to do something that breaks that norm. Yeah, so back here we have the vault. Okay. Touch of a button. Just opens right up like yeah, magic. Yeah, that's very cool. And a good so sized you, bed, yeah. yeah. If you wanna mount like a missile launcher or something, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, and close them. And how strong is that? This, the, you can walk on it's this very thing. Weird. You can walk on it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very strong. It's like, so if you've got uh, some valuable cargo in the back, uh, this, this will protect your cargo and secure it against uh, being, being stolen. So it's uh, pretty stout. People of Tesla! <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it for a drive. I mean, it feels very much like any other Tesla. You've got instant acceleration. The greenhouse is fabulous. I yeah. love how open it appears to be. And how close is this to what it will look like in production? At Tesla, we always want to have the production car be better than the show car. It, like, it always drove me crazy when like, manufacturers would come out with this cool looking show car, and then the actual production car would be way worse. Right, uh, right. And you're like, man, you got us all excited about this sweet looking car, and then the production one is not, it's terrible. We won't do show cars that aren't real. So I think we got the proportions here pretty close. What would you change on when it were finally reaching production? What do you think you would do? We're 5% too big, and if we just take all the proportions and drop them by about 5%. Oh, that, oh you mean all the way around? Yeah, so it's got to fit in a normal garage. Right. Yeah. And there's like, there's lots of little details that uh, you people wouldn't necessarily pick up consciously, just improving visibility. H having the glass like this is, right. is actually quite hard because it's so sloped. Is that a special kind of glass? Is that different oh, yeah. from well, normal windshield glass? Um, we are going to be using um, effectively uh, a form of arm armored glass right. for the car. And the door panels of the car are the 300 series stainless steel, and it's so tough that it's bulletproof to a handgun. And, and why is that important to you that it be bulletproof? I mean, I don't... It's badass and well, yeah, super okay. cool. That's super cool. <laughs> but see, I like I mean, that answer. It's I mean, a good answer. Do you want your truck to be bulletproof or not? Well, yeah, I guess sure. I do. Yeah. I guess I want my truck to be bulletproof. Yeah, sure. exactly. But, you know, you never know. When the apocalypse comes, you should be glad it's bulletproof. We want to be a leader in apocalypse technology. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so this is the first time Cybertruck has ever been ever inside been a boring company the, tunnel. We don't even know if it'll fit We in. don't know. We're pushing the envelope. Let's see. How are we? I think you're, you know, looking good on this side. Okay, here we go. Going into the tunnel. Actually, it's going pretty good. There we go. Yeah. Wow, cool tunnel. What is that on the side? This is a uh, steel reinforced concrete. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. You can go faster. Yeah, we're uh, in a tunnel under LA. Wow, it's very cool, isn't it? Yeah. You don't want to break down in here. Well, this is a test tunnel, so there'd be uh, yeah. parallel tunnels 
for you know any, any kind of like production situation. So right, there'd, be, right. there'd be many tunnels, and then you'd have doors in between the tunnels, and right. you'd also have like alcoves and that kind of thing where people could exit or do whatever's needed. Wow, look how far that is! Just my luck, this when the earthquake happened. Oh, actually, tunnels are uh, safer than the ground in an earthquake. Tunnels are safer than the ground. They think of like earthquakes are like waves on the surface. Right. Um, oh, I and, see. And if you, let's say there's a, if you're there's a hurricane, you'd rather be in a submarine than a ship. Well, that's true. Now, normally this would be on autopilot, right. so you wouldn't need to drive at all. So the idea being, you drive your Tesla down here, put it on autopilot, and it would take you through the tunnel. Yeah. So this is the elevator. Oh, the elevator takes us up. Yeah. Oh, very cool. We get right to here. And just stop where? Right about here? Wow, we just barely fit. Here we go. Well, now we're taking the elevator. Hopefully, we up. don't catch on anything. Wow. It's hilarious. Yeah. How crazy is this? And just go forward? Yeah. This is very inspiring because I was one of those people, I was all in the space race, and then we just walked away from it. And now it's back. And all these kids are here doing this because of you and you're their inspiration. So that's got to feel good. Yeah, I mean, I think we've got an incredible team and we're making great progress here. We're trying to achieve the holy grail of rocketry, which is a fully and rapidly reusable rocket. There's no, no one has ever made a fully reusable orbital rocket and never one that could be rapidly reflown like an aircraft. And that is actually the essential sort of invention, if you will, that is necessary to make humanity a multi-planet species. And it seems like common sense. I mean, you wouldn't get in a plane, fly it once, yeah. And then wreck it, we, and, then, and, then yes. take, and then build another plane. That'd be insane. Plane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so like, I mean, be like, like, it, like the current, the way, the way that rockets used to be would be like, if you bought a plane, and then you, over your destination, you jump out with a parachute, yeah. and then the plane crashes. Right. And, and that's actually how rockets work. Why do you think it was not done before? I mean, it, it's a very hard uh, engineering problem. You, you need a lot of uh, advancements in the on the engines, the airframe, the heat shield, and, and all of the technologies that go right. into the rocket in order to have it be reusable, but still get payload to orbit. Right. Getting to space is easy, Right. but getting to orbit is 100 times harder than getting to space. These have been reused, these ones here, correct? Uh, some of them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like the patina of it because it, it just has a look of a vehicle in use, you know? Yeah. They, yeah. they look like they've been into space. Yeah, yeah. And the whole thing is built on site here, isn't it? Yes, we built them uh, in this uh, high bays here and in the sort of factory of, uh, behind the high bays. But the public isn't isn't really aware of this, and I think this would be a, a, just a good thing to educate people on. It's just how absolutely fundamental it is to make a fully reusable rocket. Right. It's profound. Going back to the aircraft that, uh, analogy we were talking about, if, if you had to throw an airplane away after every flight, it would be so expensive right. that nobody could fly. But see, that's what I love is the passion that you have, because most people in your financial position they would have yachts and racing cars and places on the Caribbean and whatnot, but you put it all into this, don't you? Yeah, I live here. I actually rent a house from SpaceX in the little village over there. Yeah. I spent about half my time over the past two years just getting this place built. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just incredible. So this is our Starship. This is what goes all the way to orbit. This sits on top of the booster. Right. The ship is about 165 feet tall. Yeah, I don't think anybody has any idea how big this is. Yeah, so it's, it's 30 foot in diameter on the inside. Yeah, because when you see it on TV, you're watching it from a half a mile away. Yeah. I mean, you're sending the Empire State Building into outer space, basically, here. Yeah, yeah. it's a gigantic building. It's, it, in fact, the, the, the payload area has more volume than a 747. Wow. So, well, we can get closer if you want. Yes, can uh, we get a little closer? You're the only person I've heard talk eloquently about the actual manufacturing, because that's the hard part. Anybody can draw a rocket. Yeah, manufacturing is, is by far harder than the design. I mean, there's an old saying, it's like 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Right, right. I think it might actually be 99.9% yeah, perspiration. Well. Actually, in America, I'd say we underweight the value of manufacturing. Right. Manufacturing is extremely important, fundamental, and a very difficult thing to do. Even making prototypes of the rocket is, is easy compared to uh, manufacturing a whole bunch of them. Right. So we're gearing up to make one of these per month, and then within a few years, be making one of these every three days. Really? Yeah. You know, I always say we won World War II, not necessarily because we had the best soldiers, which we did, but we were able to make a bomber every hour at a yeah. willow run. I mean, we actually built planes faster yeah. than the Germans could shoot them down. And there's still an awful lot of handwork on these, isn't it? It's men with, with welding equipment and tools and putting a rocket together, isn't it? Uh, I mean, there is quite a bit of automation. Right. Um, 
So we use uh, lasers, uh, yes. like laser weld for, for all the, the, the larger welds. It's a machine doing a, laser, a very precise laser weld. And what you want to do here is build what? A, a total of a thousand rockets? Uh, how many rockets are needed to create a self-sustaining civilization on Mars? It's probably on, on the order of a thousand. So you can only go to Mars every two years. Hold on a second. Two years? Well, that's right, because every two years, Earth and Mars are orbitally aligned to allow for the shortest route between them. Okay, Elon. Take it away. So if you've got a thousand ships, if you're able to put a hundred people on that ship, that'll be a uh, hundred thousand people every two years. And say so it'd take you 20 years to get to a million people. And figure, I don't know, about a million people is probably what you need to create a self-sustaining city on Mars. Well, that's why I love you. Always think big. I remember talking to you years ago about trains, and I was saying, you know, 200 mile an hour train. He said, no, 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 mine will be 800 miles an hour. I mean, you're, you're yeah. always thinking that next step ahead, which, which, which I love. As long as one is not breaking the laws of physics, right. uh, it can be done. Hi, I'm Jay Leno, and if you like these videos, uh, watch Jay Leno's Garage, all new episodes on CNBC Wednesday nights at 10. And uh, if you like these videos, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything, it's free. Imagine that, free videos. The age we live in.